creative mistakes to avoid with Facebook ads in 2024. I spend close to $2 million per month on Facebook ads, and we make somewhere close to about 30 to 50 new ad creatives a month for our clients. And with that being said, there's a lot of mistakes that need to be avoided if you want high converting creative. I review, I don't know, somewhere around 30 to 40 creatives a month for my students. And these are the most common mistakes they make that uh, we also like, you know, sometimes we might accidentally make inside of the agency that when fixed, really improve performance. So here's the common mistakes to avoid at all cost. Number one is the hook does not call out the ideal audience. I see this so many times. So here's an example, ditch the coffee for something 10 times better versus losing hook example. Can someone explain to me how one cup of this? Yeah, so this is a recent ad copy test. We did not, not ad copy test, a creative test we did where we had the creator say this and then we had, we had the creator say this. This one won by a landslide. Now let's just look at this a little bit better. Ditch the coffee for something 10 times better. This is going to appeal for, to one, coffee lovers, and two, it's also going to appeal to someone who is um, either A, curious a little bit about it, but also to B, that is kind of dissatisfied with their current coffee right now, which is our ideal customer for this particular product. Now, number two is the hook does not hit on an urgent desire. So winning hook example, this is for all my ladies who need a self care night versus bad hook example, three reasons why I like paint by numbers. So there's no desire actually in three reasons why I like paint by numbers, but there is one in this is for all my ladies who need a self care night. This hook allowed us to scale to 15K a day in revenue. And then this one right here kept us at about three to 5K a day in revenue. So this one hit on a mass desire across the market. This one doesn't. No one has the desire for paint by numbers. And the portion of the market that does have a desire for mass by, uh, or paint by numbers is a very small portion of the market, which is why we were stuck at a certain level of spin. Now, next one is the hook does not make you want to watch more or read more. So let's just take a look at this. This little known change in Medicare can leave you owing thousands. That's the hook, all right? Private health insurance denies $3,400 emergency ambulance bill for a veteran's six-year-old daughter, okay? So which one really makes you want to read more or, or, or watch more? So like the hook is the main headline on that creative. So if this is a video, this would be the beginning of the video. This one right here, it makes me want to watch more. This video itself, creative mistakes to avoid with Facebook ads in 2024. You clicked on it because you want to know what those mistakes are. So that's the key things right there. Now, next one is the creative does a poor job at getting people's emotions worked up. So I actually linked this to a Twitter video right here. I dropped for you guys. Let's see if I can pull this up. So this one's ditched a coffee for something 10 times better. And taste here is just going back into that like thing. I uh, talked about the beginning. So a couple things right here. We kind of go a little bit into the storytelling. Coffee ran my life for decades. I felt like a drag every single day. My gut was always on fire. The more I drank, the less energy I had. Okay. So you can see right here, it kind of, you know, pushes a little bit more into like probing at the problem and also telling people like, Hey, we have that problem too, but it's also, it's, it's being very, you know, descriptive. It's also using, you know, stuff that like, it hits my emotions. It's not just saying like, like it's not very vague. It's not very robotic. There's no emotions at all. You know, it has some expressive motions inside of it. So that's another big one right there. We want to hit on the emotions that uh, really get people worked up. That's, that's what really makes people want to click and want to watch more. So like the desire they have and everything and also probing at those key pain points they have. Now, next one is there's no logical justification. So we're actually going to play this video right here. All right. And this is another winning creative we have, a um, little known secret about Medicare. And we've already seen this one before. So what's cool about this one right here is that it hits on like the, the pain points, it hits on the problem and it educates people, but that balance of pain points benefits to education, that is key, all right? There's some people that live too much in the benefits and too much in, in like the problem and not enough in the logical justification of how this works. So you can see right here, so, you know, we hit on those pain points and then here's how like the product works and like how it can help people uh, protect them right there. So it's a little bit about how the product works and then also to like editing this. Like, all right. When you call an ambulance, da, 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 your emergency ambulance bill could be deemed not medically necessary. So we're kind of talking to about how like the problem works. And then we're also talking about how the product works itself. So, you know, for example, 
you know, you may be having a problem with scaling for Facebook ads right now. You might be stuck. You might be hitting a ceiling right now. And the reason why you're hitting that ceiling is because likely your creative does not appeal to a large enough crowd of people. You can see this for yourself. If you look at the frequency last seven days, if it's above a 1.0, like a 1.5, it means you're hitting the same people over and over and over. So in order to fix this problem, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and you know create creative that appeals to a larger mass desire and a larger crowd of people. So you see right there, I added the logical reasoning around that problem, why you're having that problem and the solution and how that solution works. That's what we're looking for. Okay, next one. Too many features, benefits explained. I see this over and over with so many new marketers. You know, they come in and they, they learn about features and benefits and they just start, yes, it does this, 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 this. And it makes you do this, 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 this. And it's like, all right, that's cool. But the problem is when you showcase too many features and too many benefits is it goes ahead and it overwhelms the consumer. So I like to hit on the one main feature and the one main benefit that sells that particular person. For example, you know, I'm into cars. I love cars. And like one feature for me is like zero to 60. Like, I'm sorry. It's just like one of those things. I'm just like, if that car can do zero to 60 really fast. Like that, that, that works me up. Like I want it. All right. You know, it's just one of the many features of that particular car, you know, nicer wheels, better engine, yada, yada, yada. But the benefit of that zero to 60 is, you know, filling that power, you know, it's likely if it has a fast zero to 60, it's going to launch a little bit off the ground a little bit more. You're going to feel that power a little bit more. And I'm sorry, like that's my favorite. So like, that's my biggest selling point right there. So that desire for power, that 500, 800 horsepower engine that allows for that zero to 60 really quick. And that's, you know, a feature that attached to a benefit that attached the benefit of the benefit right there. That's really like the main thing that pushes me over. Your audience is going to have a certain feature and a certain benefit and a certain benefit of that benefit that's going to hit on the main desire of that marketplace. That's going to really sell your product. And that's why I like to kind of test different features and benefits in the creative and really see around my product what works best. Once you start dealing with like market sophistication and stuff like that, it also becomes a little bit easier, but that's something I was a big game changer for me because it allowed me to go deeper in certain benefits and certain features versus saying like it does all of these things and I couldn't really touch in deep and like deeper into those particular features or benefits. Here's a great example right here of an ad of an ad that's worked really well for us, the anti-lazy elixir. So just hitting on the benefits. I actually kind of hit like on a few benefits right here. Formulate to boost focus, energy, and motivation. So not really that bad. Uh, but I, I've seen a lot of people that just call out multiple, multiple features in a row, multiple different benefits in a row. And what happens is when you articulate that to the consumer, they're like, wait, what does this product do again? Or if you build the whole lot around a certain benefit or a whole lot around a certain, or like, yeah, a whole lot around a certain feature to benefit, what happens is, is it's a lot more powerful. All right, next one is lots of fat in the creative. Now, this one right here is basically just like, you know, I see this in a lot of newer advertisers. They don't really know what to cut and stuff like that. But basically like you'll make like a 60 second video like this and like maybe this much is actually valuable to the consumer. And this is just bullshit. For example, we had this particular client selling that was a golf app. Uh, so it was selling app installs and stuff like that. And we had like a cost per store trial, of like $45 and our target was like 30. So we had to get from 45 to 30 and we basically took a video we got some UGC content in it's like a 30 second long video and we were running it it was doing like $45 and I was like okay well, how can we make this better I watched this video I'm like the only juicy part is like 10 seconds right here so I cut the first 20 seconds off and I kid you not that particular creative scaled with a $15 cost per start trial scaled with a $15 cost per start trial so you really only want to hit Number one, on a really good hook at the beginning, but two, on the main things that go with that particular hook. You know, this particular UGC was very blatantly obvious. Like, it was like, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm a professional golfer. I do this, this, and this. It's like, no one gives a fuck about that, right? People want to know what's in it for them. Call that a beginning, go right into the solution, the problem, and then boom. Next one is going after the wrong awareness level. So market awareness deals with how far or close someone is to your product as giving them what they desire. So I'm pull up this example again real quick. This is a this for all my ladies who need a self-care night. So this is like a, you know, I would say like almost an unaware market because 
you know, we're not calling out the product. We're not calling out the desire. We're saying self-care night, but it's not really like, uh, you know, who wants to unwind and relax, for example. So you can say it's debatable on a wear market. Uh, whereas bad hook example is three reasons why I like paint by numbers. This is a very, you know, solutional wear market right here. People that already know about paint by numbers and want to do paint by numbers. Whereas this is a pretty unaware market of just, you know, girls want to have a, a self-care night. That's it. This allowed us to scale significantly more. This one did not let us scale at all. Why? Because it's more solution wear. It's a much smaller market of people that already know about paint by numbers. Going after the wrong sophistication. This happens a lot too as well. And this is basically where it's like the sophistication is the number of products someone has tried before yours. Okay. Now at every minute, there you have people in every part of the market sophistication, right? And I've had that quite this question quite a few times from me. Hey, Nick, like, yes, there's a lot of people who've tried pre-workout, but there's equally just as many people that haven't tried pre-workout. Like, yeah, I 100% agree with you, right? But think about it like this. Someone who hasn't tried pre-workout before, we have to educate them what pre-workout is, what it does, blah, 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 right? And it's a little bit harder of a sell, you know? I remember like back in my day, my first ever agency client, the first time they ever worked with an agency, it was a really difficult sell. Like it was for $500. You know, my my price now for my agency is $10,000 and it takes me to like literally a 15, 20 minute call and I'm closing the 10K deal, right? Where back then, a $500 client, a lot more education, a lot more meetings just to make this big decision because they were had a low sophistication. They were the ones who never tried pre-workout. They weren't willing to spend that money yet. They weren't willing to risk it. People have already tried pre-workout. They're willing to risk the money. They know how much it costs already. All right. They're willing to spend some money. So for example, you know, I, I was to launch a pre-workout today. Nick's pre-workout, you know, 10X is your Facebook ad performance because you have energy all night. Yeah. If I launched this particular pre-workout and it's like, if I target people who've never went to the gym before, I have to do a lot of education, get them right up. Right. Whereas if I launched a pre-workout, I could easily just take a look real quick at the marketplace. Okay. Hey, Everyone has a negative review on pre-workout because they hate the jitters. All right, cool. All I got to go do now is say, hey, pre-workout without the jitters. And people are lining up. And they're so it's such an easier sell. And I don't have to educate them on what pre-workout is and how it does it and all that good stuff. So the wrong mark sophistication is a really big one. Okay, next one is script is great, but the wrong act. So I um, had a call the other day with uh, one of my, uh, you know, inner circle students that I mentor and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we're targeting a male homeowner. He's 45 plus and he's looking for solar panels installed on his home, right? So uh, a wrong example of, uh, you know, like basically like a, uh, like a UGC video, for example, is having like a blonde 21 year old girl in it. I mean, give or take some of these 45 year old men probably would click on a blonde 21 year old girl, just being completely honest here, but what seriousness will they have and how, what type of intent is behind that click? Whereas a good example is like a blue collar guy who's in his 30, who's, you know, about 34 years old, he has a little bit of a beard, you know, maybe like a little polo shirt on and uh, he's professional, right? Think about that. Which person would you like selling solar panels to you for your house? Nine times out of 10, it's probably the blue collar guy. If you say to blonde 21 girl, you're not treating her seriously. Let's just be square about that. Now let's look at it from the next one. So if you have the right actor, you also need the right environment. Environment's everything else in here. You know, if you look at my old YouTube videos, I had that little like studio set up in my living room. If you look at even older, I had like the snake tank behind me. Now I have this little nice little setup. This is my environment that I'm in. So wrong example is the blonde 21 year old girl and she's walking through a city. Again, we're trying to hit homeowners, 45 plus male, and she's walking through a city. That doesn't like, what? No, that's not gonna resonate with people. Now on the other top, look at on top of a roof, you know, our 34 year old, blue collar guy with a polo shirt on he's on top of a roof in a suburb neighborhood you know basically ideal you know type of people we're looking for and he has solar panels that's on a roof right there behind him and he's saying hey look i'm in your city i'm giving quotes out right now for solar panels click link below add like your name and your number and stuff like that and i'll come and take a look at your solar panels and i'll give you or like your house and i'll give you an estimate of what it costs which one you think is going to work better from there now, last one, and this is probably the most important one out of all of them, is you are simply not showing people their desire being achieved. So let me give you a good example right here. What if I sold a vacuum cleaner and like I just basically shot a UGC video? That's how a lot of you guys do it. Here's my vacuum cleaner. It sucks up stuff really good. I love it so much. It's a really amazing gift. Shipping took so fast. Once I saw the customer reviews on the website, I was sold. 
Boom. That's literally how all of y'all UGC content looks like. I know it because y'all send it to me and y'all in my inner circle and y'all my mentorship and I take a look at it. Like I see that. Now let's look at it from another perspective. What if we said that same thing, but instead of me just sitting here and holding it and saying those things, what if we got a whole bunch of video footage of that vacuum cleaner sucking up various piles of trash, just showing it, boom, sucking everything up effortlessly. And we can still do the voiceover, talk about how great it is. People believe what they see, not what they hear. So that's also why I try to show you all these examples here to, to further articulate to you guys what these, what these things look like. So if we know people believe what they see, not they hear, why are we showing them the wrong visuals? Oh, well, Nick, I, I drop shipped the product from China, so I, I have to use AliExpress stuff. I don't trust these UGC creators. I tell these UGC creators to, to film whatever they want. You guys, you got to think smart. You got to be specific. Literally, go ahead. Tell your creators, hey, I want you to film me 10 shots of you vacuuming up various things in your house. I want to see some mud. I want to see some dirt. I want to see some dust bunnies. I want to see some dog hair. I want you to pour a thing of Cheerios on the ground and suck it up with the vacuum cleaner. Like all of that right there is going to be a lot more powerful versus just sitting there and talking with it. If you take anything from this video, this right here is like that 80% thing. If there's one thing that's going to like make me like the most money, it's this right here. Visually articulate the desire being achieved. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, if you want me to mentor you, click link below, have Nick Terrio mentor you. And if you want me to run your Facebook ads, then click link below for the Facebook ads. We, we take on Shopify stores on about $100,000 a month and we help them scale to uh, multi seven figures per month. So that's the type of client we're looking to help specifically. So thank you all so much, guys. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Peace out.